Senator Blunt. Sir. Well, uh, thank you. I haven't been in this uh, conference room for about two weeks, so I'm glad to be back with our friends at the Port Authority, but uh, uh, sorry to be here at a time with such challenges, and the challenges will go on after whatever decisions are made in the next uh, a couple of days. Uh, clearly, this is a, a, a difficult situation with uh, that we really haven't, we've faced it, uh, but maybe not got quite this close uh, since the, uh, the uh, plan to manage this water uh, was first made in, in 1937. Uh, lots of water, lots of places. Uh, there are lots of advantages to being in, in the biggest uh, drainage delta area in the, uh, in the country that we have as these rivers come together, the Arkansas, the Missouri, and the Ohio. And uh, you know, one of the real challenges we're seeing right now when there's water coming in all directions from all of those, all of those rivers. Uh, certainly uh, Congresswoman Emerson uh, understands these issues. She cares about them. She's a great partner in trying to figure out what we can do uh, in the next uh, day or two. And then depending on what happens in the next few days, what we can do after that uh, to try to continue to be sure that uh, the right decisions are made and the right decisions are made in the quickest possible environment. And uh, you know, handling this situation right now is critical and then how we move beyond whatever set of decisions are made is also critical. Uh, lots of uh, local challenges with uh, water and debris uh, and uh, we'll be looking at that and uh, looking at that in the context of whatever is done with some of these other weather events that are going on right now uh, and to be sure that uh, this particular problem is discussed and a solution is found as we're working to find other solutions. The president has made a pretty significant commitment, it sounds like to me, about the tornado hit areas in our state and in other states uh, and we want to be sure that the, the areas impacted by water uh, are included in that discussion uh, as well. As I said, uh, Congresswoman Anderson has been here every day this week. She's going to uh, continue to, to be the great advocate for uh, Southeast Missouri that she's been for a long time, all the time we served together uh, in the House. And uh, there's no one I'd rather work with as a partner in any challenge uh, than Joanne Emerson. And Joanne, do you want to say a couple of things before the general? Um, thank you very much, Roy. I appreciate so much you being here, and it's critical. Uh, that we all continue working as a team together. Uh, I also want to thank General Walsh and uh, Colonel Reichling, uh, all of the other members of the, the general's team. Uh, everybody has pulled together, and this is a very tough situation and one that, uh, no matter which way you look at it, is very you know troubling for so many people whose lives are impacted by the the weather, by the flooding. Uh, and of course, in our usual wonderful Southeast Missouri way, everybody pulls together uh, and family helps, family and neighbor helps neighbor. But uh, be all that as it may, I, you know, I am fortunately can't be the person to make the decision. Uh, I, I think most people know what my decision would be uh, with regard to the, uh, the mainline levy uh, down at uh, Birds Point in, uh, in Mississippi County. Uh, but I'm also not an engineer. And perhaps Senator Blunt and I would love to be engineers so we could make these decisions, but, uh, but we are not. Uh, all I can say is that I do uh, firmly believe that the general and his team have worked 24-7 round the clock to, to look at every fact and every figure. You know, our, our position is let's try to have uh, as much natural overtopping uh, based on river heights uh, as pot levels as possible uh, and do things in a natural way. Uh, and that would be our, our preference. And we've got a lot of people whose lives and livelihoods are dependent on, on the decision that's going to be made. And if, uh, if lives are upended and livelihoods are upended, um, how do we figure out how to make good uh, for those people whose lives have changed so dramatically. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to present uh, General Michael Walsh, who is president of the Mississippi River Commission, uh, who has really been here and been available uh, every single time we've, we've wanted to talk to him. If it's 10 times a day, uh, he's been available. 
uh, the man on, <clears throat> unfortunately, whose decision, <laughs> whose shoulders rests, uh, you know, management of the Mississippi River and Tributaries Project. And uh, I guess you don't get to be a leader uh, without having to make difficult decisions at times. But anyway, General, thank you very much for, for all that you have uh, provided to us uh, in the meantime. I know you all are doing a great job. Thank you. And, and, uh, as was mentioned, I, was the, I am the uh, president of the Mississippi River Commission, and the, uh, I have two of my uh, commission members here, Sam, uh, Sam Angel, sitting uh, right over here, and uh, one of uh, your neighbors, uh, R.D. James, is also a, a member of the, of the commission as well. Uh, first, let me thank uh, the port, and, and uh, Dan, thanks for lunch. I was, uh, the, the nourishment was, was, was much needed, and I, pre I appreciate that, uh, that very much. Uh, public safety is, uh, is number one, and, and that's the key item that, uh, that we're looking, uh, looking at. And we're looking at it from the uh, whole systems uh, approach. As was mentioned, uh, after the 1927 uh, floods, uh, Congress uh, appropriated the funds for us to build a uh, system in and around here from uh, Cairo down, uh, down south uh, to, to put in a levee system that would uh, uh, not allow that type of uh, flooding again and since 1927, 1928 when the act was put together. Uh, the nation has invested uh, about $13 billion into, uh, into this program and we've been putting the, uh, the levees and flood walls together since, uh, since that time frame. Uh, in, that, uh, in that project, the uh, Mississippi River Tributary Projects, there are four floodways, and those flood floodways get operated when the, uh, the river is at certain, uh, certain elevations. In uh, this area, this floodway is operated at when the Cairo gauge is at 61 and, uh, and rising, and I'll talk more about that in, in another minute. Uh, the next uh, floodway down is the Bonnie Carry, and that Bonnie Carry is in Louisiana, and that gets operated when the water passing New Orleans reaches uh, 1.25 million cubic feet per second. Another floodway is Moganza, again in uh, in Louisiana, and that gets operated if the water gets to uh, 1.5 million cubic feet per second. So each one of these floodways have uh, have particular triggers, and we're working uh, we're working with that. Last night we hit the uh, we hit a, a historic uh, event. Um, while you were all sleeping, the uh, the Cairo gauge went to uh, 59.69. Uh, the previous high was at 59.5, and that was uh, in 1937. Uh, so we are now at record high record highs off of the uh, off of the Cairo gauge. Uh, we had General uh, Peabody uh, here yesterday. He's from the uh, Great Lakes and Ohio River uh, Division, and he was working, keeping as much water uh, from entering into the system as he could from the Kentucky and Barclay, uh, Barclay dams. And they've, been, they've taken about a foot and a half off of the uh, Cairo uh, gauge in the last, uh, in the last week. Uh, because of uh, this rainstorm and, and the one that's following behind it, he's, his ability to store water, <clears throat> to store water is, is, uh, is continuing to be uh, uh, being used up. And we also talked with our uh, uh, another member of the Mississippi uh, River Commission, General McMahon. Uh, General McMahon is a commander of the Northwest Division and he's holding back, uh, back waters at, uh, at Gavin's Point and uh, Truman Dam as well. So between the three of us, uh, we've been holding back waters uh, so that we can, uh, we can control the crest here at, uh, here at Cairo. But with a lot of the uh, the rain that we have uh, today and what's uh, and what's forecasted, a lot of those reservoirs are at their are at their full stage, and in a uh, in a few days we'll be uh, having to uh, evacuate some of those waters behind the uh, behind the dams. The uh, uh, right now we're we're looking to get to uh, 60 on the Cairo gauge uh, tonight, somewhere around uh, somewhere around midnight. And by tomorrow uh, afternoon, we should be at 60.5 uh, on the Cairo gauge. Uh, we're looking for uh, the National Weather Service forecasts, which should be out at uh, at should be out in at about 1:30. Uh, they're working with all of our hydrologists and scientists, and and providing a a report that we should get out uh, in the next uh, in the next couple of uh, next couple of hours. And we'll see where where we're looking at from that. So uh, from that perspective, uh, the things that we're looking at is I'm looking at and on how to uh, to make the decision 
on uh, the Birds Point, New Madrid, and whether to, to operate that project is one, stresses on the system. And we have stresses uh, on the system at Cairo, Illinois. Um, we have probably the largest boil that I've ever, that I've ever seen. And a number of folks are, uh, yesterday it was considered uh, that the system was degrading there. Uh, we brought a lot of volunteers and, and, uh, and National Guardsmen there to help us ring that levy, and we've got that one, uh, that one under control. As you know, the, uh, the mayor of Cairo has asked for a mandatory evacuation in that area. So we're pretty concerned with that, uh, that stress on the, uh, on the system. As we go further downriver, we look at uh, Fulton County levees. We have a number of uh, sand boils that are uh, opening up there. And so we, uh, yesterday we'd consider it the, uh, degrading. Uh, Colonel Reichling, your district commander, has got folks down there now trying to, uh, to work those boils and get those under, uh, under control. As we go further downstream, we've got an issue down in, um, in Mississippi in, uh, in a place called uh, Bucks, uh, Buck Chute. It's on Eagle Lake, and we're working uh, sand, uh, correction, we're working a water berm down there as well. So the system's under a lot of stress, and it's something that you would expect when you're at uh, the maximum force that, uh, that you've designed a project for, uh, for, and we are under unprecedented uh, forces right now that's going on in the, uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the system. So as I mentioned, one, we're, I'm looking at stresses on the system. Two, I'm looking at what we're doing at the, at the Cairo gauge. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, it's going to be at 60.5 uh, 60 tomorrow, and we're looking for the weather forecast again. My scientists, uh, engineers are working together to, uh, to put that document out, uh, out publicly. Uh, but it looks like it's going to uh, going to continue to rise in the in the short term, and I'll wait for that uh, that report to uh, to come out. And then the third thing that we're looking at is uh, is safety of the crews, uh, the crews that uh, that will have to operate this project, making sure that they can get to the uh, to the project safely and do what they need to do to put the project in operation. So those are the three things that I'm I'm looking at before making the decision to uh, to operate the project. Yesterday, I mentioned that the uh, motor vessel Mississippi moved from Hickman, Kentucky, uh, to its current uh, current location in, uh, near near Birds Point. I uh, took a, a decision uh, briefing today from uh, uh, Colonel Reichling, and we've decided to put those uh, those barges that are carrying carrying the slurry mix, uh, uh, give them a, um, a be prepared to move at uh, at 1500 today. So Colonel Reichling and I will will sit down and discuss again. Uh, get to a decision brief, and at 1500 today, we'll decide whether to move them from their current locations up next to uh, next to the levee. Now, that is not the decision to uh, to operate their project. There are three other um, there, there are three other points before we get to uh, get to that. So it's just the next step uh, to move forward. Now, the decision has not been made to move those, uh, but we will be prepared to move at uh, 1500. Was the order I gave to uh, Colonel Reichling at uh, at 11 o'clock. Uh, I just have to say how, uh, how proud I am to, uh, to see all of the volunteers that are out, uh, out helping each other, helping us, the National Guards. It's, uh, it's uh, when there's a difficult and challenging task that's in front of us where we see our, us Americans raise their hands and, and move and volunteer and get into the, uh, into the flood fight. So I'm really, uh, really happy to see uh, so many people trying to, uh, trying to assist. In the, next, uh, in the next phase, as, uh, as was mentioned, is if we do have to operate or not operate it, how do we clean up afterwards and how do we put things back together, uh, put together a, uh, uh, a number of teams to look at, that, uh, look at that approach. If we have to use the project or not, how do we put things back together and reconstitute where we're, where we're at so we're ready to, uh, to do this again. And so we put that under an, a number of different folks inside the division, and I'm calling this uh, Operation Watershed. With that, I'll take questions. Oh, comments. Questions? Yes, sir. General, again, the 61 foot. It, it releases from, from the, the core, it said approaches 61 foot with a crest to continue to rise. That's when you're able to make a decision. It seems like that's where we are. Right now we're at, uh, we're, we're not at 60, we're at 59, uh, 59.69. And the weather forecast, you know, with the weather channel now, we all have access to the weather. <coughs> the rain's not going to stop. That seems to be the tipping point at this point. 
there's three things that I'm looking for, stress on the system, the KRO gauge at, uh, at uh, 61 and rising, and safety of the uh, workforce. So we're waiting at least until we, we get these forecasts in um, this afternoon over how high we're expecting the river to get at Cairo before we see any type of decision. Is I guess the real question is, is 61 the magic number? If it gets there, is it for sure you know going to happen or do we still have to consider those two other things? Is there any chance that it does reach 61 that we would not have to put the plan into operation? I would, I would uh just the, uh, the first word on, on waiting, I, I would say no one's, uh, no one's waiting. Uh, we have hundreds of crews out uh, doing lots of, uh, lots of things in regards to fighting, uh, fighting sand boils. We got the engineers and scientists actively working on, on trying to squeeze out the last bit of information from an engineering judgment and a science judgment point of view on, on where we're at. And, and, so, and so folks are, are uh, flat out working. Uh, so I wouldn't say the word waiting uh, in, in this uh, in this regard at all. Uh, a, as I mentioned, there's three uh, three trigger points, and that's uh, 61 and rising, and, and the systems, uh, and make sure that the system is not unraveling, and we also uh, have safety of the workers uh, included. Other questions? Any concern that Kara was eroding from underneath? Uh, you see those holes on Commercial Street right here. There's a lot of water underneath. <coughs> Certainly, and, and that's the uh, that's the uh, failure mechanism right now at uh, at Cairo is not overtopping; it's under seepage, and that's the same issue that we have at uh, Fulton County, and the same issue we have at Bucks Point uh, Bucks uh, Shoot in uh, in Eagle Lake. It's not a, an overtopping uh, failure; it is a um, uh, under seepage concern that we're looking at. Yeah. Other questions? Uh, it is the the operations plan calls for it is the intent of the current plan to allow natural overtopping of the upper fuel flow section prior to determining the necessity to provide levy. Uh, is it still your intention absolutely to allow natural overtopping to occur prior to operation? The uh, three three things that we're looking for if the system's not uh, not stable and it uh, and it begins to uh, to degrade then we will make the uh, make that decision prior to uh, prior to overtopping, assuming that the system does not degrade and it gets to uh, 61 and rising, uh, that'll be a, a decision point uh, as well. And, and then the third thing, of course, is safety of uh, safety of the workers. Now, those are, those three things are what I'm looking at before uh, before making uh, making that decision. You know, we were originally expecting a crest today. Um, obviously, that's no longer the case. Do we have any idea? Are those the numbers that you're waiting on when we might be seeing a crest um, at Cairo? Uh, right. Right now, I think the last, uh, this morning, it was a crest on, on the 3rd of May. Uh, that crest was going to extend out uh, five or six uh, five or six days. I believe from what, uh, what I'm hearing unofficially is that may uh, happen earlier than the, uh, than the 3rd of May. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. If you do have to operate the floodway, how soon do you think the pressure or the stress that's going all the way down will be relieved? And what happens if the rain doesn't stop even after you operate the floodway, if it comes to that? The, uh, the crest is going to continue to go down, uh, down river until it goes into the, into the Gulf of Mexico. So I, I suspect uh, we will have to operate the, uh, the Bonnie Carey uh, spillway and at this point, we're not quite sure whether we're going to have to uh, operate the, the Maganza uh, spillway. But what about in our area? Once you operate the floodway in our area, how soon will it take for the stress to be relieved? We think, uh, we think it'll be about 24 hours before we see a reduction in stages. Uh, we'll see reductions at, uh, at Cairo and, further up, and Paducah and further upriver, and we'll also see reduction in stages as we, uh, as we go down, down river. And those reductions, uh, we, we think was somewhere between 48 and 72 hours. Yes, sir. General Day Air Force Bomb, the Kentucky Derby, Louisville obviously is getting water. When you talk about system, that's as far grass, I mean, as far wide as you're talking about the whole system, correct, of the Upper Ohio? We're, uh, the, the Upper Ohio is part of the, is part of the system, and, and they, they are getting record, uh, record floods as, as well. General, uh, General Peabody has done everything that he can to, uh, to hold water back. 
uh, but his, uh, his dams are reaching, uh, reaching capacity. When you talk about the system degrading, uh, it's obviously continuing to degrade with the amount of water that's going to be sustained. It's not going to stop degrading at any point in the future. What we've been able to, uh, to stabilize those areas that, we've been, uh, uh, that have been degrading, and uh, because of the hard work of a lot of volunteers and the National Guard and, and our engineers, we've been able to uh, stabilize those areas that are degrading. Uh, but we need to be uh, vigilant, continue to, uh, to do what we're doing, walking and driving the, uh, the levees and seeing if there's any other uh, impacts that we need to, uh, 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 to get to and, and stabilize. You said that uh, uh, you suspect that you might operate another floodway in Louisiana. Do you have any suspicion about whether or not this floodway would have to be activated? Yes, when the, uh, when the uh, Cairo gauge gets to 61 and rising or the system becomes destabilized, uh, then, we'll operate the, then we'll operate this system. If you, had to, if you had to operate the floodway today, right now, is the system short up, strong enough to, to do that? We were talking about some worries about degradation of the system. If it had to be done right now, is the system strong enough to do that? I'm not quite sure which system you're talking about. Uh, you said that uh, you know, with the problems in Cairo and, and some, some, you know, some other situations that you guys are shoring up and you've got people working on those, but if, you, if the decision had to be made and you were to make that decision today, or the, is it ready, is it prepared to activate? Yes, the uh, floodway is, uh, is prepared to, uh, uh, for the next uh, decision cycle, and, and uh, that's to move the, uh, uh, the toes up to the, uh, up to the levees. The next uh, cycle after that, the, uh, the floodway is prepared for, for all of the decision cycles between now and, and execution. We'll, uh, we'll be talking with the, uh, the governors and keeping them uh, directly informed as we make each of, uh, each of the decisions. I've talked with the uh, uh, governor's staff in both, uh, in both states this morning about putting the, uh, the toes on a, uh, on a 1,500 hour be prepared to move to the, move to the levees. As we go into the, uh, to the next decision cycle, and, and that's to uh, move the materials off of the barge into the, uh, into the pipes, uh, we'll again inform the, uh, the governors of when that uh, decision, point, uh, decision point is. Every one of these decision points is not just a, a, a decision of, uh, uh, of myself only. There's hundreds of, of engineers and scientists that are working and talking with each other, uh, uh, contracting construction guys that are out there feeding information into a, into a decision cycle. The decision goes to the uh, to the district commander, uh, Colonel uh, Colonel Reichling, All of these hundreds of uh, of uh, data points, and he gives me a recommendation from there. I use the data points at my level and make the uh, make a decision from off uh, from that. All right. Excuse me, sir. We're, 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 yes, sir. Okay. Uh, go ahead, James. Pardon me. Uh, one qu one question uh, initiated me making this comment. This. Uh, about Louisville and the Kentucky, Kentucky Derby. This watershed carries 41% of the water in the United States, the third largest watershed in the world. And we now have the flood of record coming down that watershed, not only from the Ohio, but from the Missouri and the Upper Miss. That's a nightmare when you get a crest coming down from all three of those systems. Not, not to mention the Illinois and some of the other smaller ones. So, so that's, that's what the Corps is trying to handle. That's what the River Commission is trying to handle as it comes by. Uh, as the general said, the MRT project goes all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. This, this is what we're focused on right now is Burgess Point, New Madrid, but we'll continue to be focused until this flood water gets out into the Gulf of Mexico. On a personal note, uh, we, we've had concern expressed to us from uh, areas of East Prairie and New Madrid about if you use that floodway, will we still be protected? Those cities are not in the floodway, but the reason those people are fearful, the waters that would be activated, that would come into the floodway, would run adjacent to their protection levees. Uh, we still at this time feel those protection levees are very adequate and good enough shape to handle the water coming down the floodway. But uh, if anyone in your viewing area has concerns they need to look, need to talk to the sheriffs of New Madrid County and Mississippi County, Missouri. They are prepared to, to help them and direct them. Thank you. Yeah, I think we have time for one more question. Please. Yeah, 
Yes, sir. Sorry. I just want to. I'm from uh, Lake Village, Arkansas. I've had the opportunity to be up here twice on a flyover. In my 30, almost 32 years on the commission, this is the worst flooding I've ever seen in my life. Y'all have got roads underwater, railroads underwater, highways underwater. It's really bad. And uh, like I say, all this water that y'all got up here, it's got to come down my way also, and we're pretty high down there now. But I just want to tell you, it's really bad up here. Thank you. Where you want to say one more? One more, uh, one more question, but before we do that, thanks for, uh, thanks for all uh, of you uh, being here. I know it was a short notice as we were uh, running from one place to a, another. Yes, sir. General Senator Blunt uh, said that there's a time frame of the next 24 to 48 hours before the decisions are made. Could there be a decision made prior to then? Doesn't this appear to be inevitable? Uh, I, I don't believe that it's in, inevitable. Uh, I think that there is also uh, an opportunity that it can happen on a timeline that, that uh, uh, Senator Blunt may not be aware about in regards to if the uh, system becomes destabilized or unstable, which it is not now, then, I'll, uh, then we'll have to uh, act uh, faster than the time frame that was, uh, was mentioned earlier. But right now, let me reassure everybody that it, it's, you know, the system is stable now uh, and we're continuing to look at it as, uh, uh, and, and make sure that it remains that way. Uh, one last question. You know, you know the, the rumors of Rand Pat around, and I'm almost a neighbor of RD, and I'm, and he related to this and what he said a while ago. Some of the questions we've had, uh, the water coming down, will it, will it overflow the levees there at New Madrid? Uh, also, some of the other questions is how long will it be on the spillway? And I said, uh, we don't want to answer that. So. I think your, your question was, uh, are the setback levees uh, prepared for this? Yes, and we had the uh, setback levees were, in, uh, were inspected just, uh, just two months ago, and, they, uh, and, their, and their shape is as designed, and so we expect the back levees to be, uh, to be just, uh, just fine. Yes. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, General.